former President Grimson, Prime Minister Jakobsdotter, um, Crown Princess uh, Victoria of Sweden, Excellences and friends, it is a pleasure for me to join you in Reykjavik for this year's uh, Arctic Circle Assembly. And it is an uh, honor for me, on behalf of the government and the people of the Faroe Islands, to speak to such a distinguished gathering of people. Let me start by thanking former President uh, Olafur Ragnar Grimson for his vision and uh, determination in bringing so many people together to create this exciting and international forum. I have just taken office uh, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Culture in the new coalition government of the Faroe Islands. It is my wish and my intention to use my tenure to explore how the clear connection between culture and foreign policy can become stronger in our international relations, not least in our regional cooperation in the Arctis. For us, it is particularly exciting that this great gathering takes place in Iceland, with a focus on the Arctis as our common region. The Faroe Islands and Iceland are so closely knit as neighbors as we can be. We have countless uh, cultural and historical ties. Our languages are more similar than most. We were settled uh, by the same people around the same time, and we have been trading partners ever since. The strong historical and cultural bonds between our two countries and people can be extended to all the peoples of the Arctic. We share many of the same realities all around the circumpolar north. Thank you. The challenges of climate changes are one major example. But in the midst of these changing realities, it is important to focus on the people living in the Arctic. Our languages, our education, our societies and our culture. We, the people of the Arctic, yes, we are few in number compared to the uh, vastness of the Arctic area, but we are not living in a wilderness. We are not here only to survive, but to thrive and develop our societies and economies across the region. And for sure, we know from personal experiences that when our natural environment thrives, we try. Ladies and gentlemen, in this context, I would like to point out the importance of starting with our children, teaching them to respect our fragile nature, and that sustainable use of all natural resources is our greatest res responsibility focusing on the welfare and education of our children is our greatest res res responsibility and our greatest investment. They will set the example for genera generations to come, and just, in, as, and just as importantly, they can already set an example for our generation. We must make sure that our societies and cultures will continue to thrive in the hands of our children. We need to instill in our children a strong sense of belonging, both locally and globally. We are inspired by each other and our common realities in the Arctic. We must also inspire in our children the conviction that we have a key role to play as a region in the global community. Actually, I believe our children already know this much better than we do. But we must encourage and support them in taking forward and taking seriously our common responsibilities. I firmly believe that the Arctic nation can and should lead the way in showing how our common challenges of distance, climate, and demographic are not obstacles. They are drivers of innovation 
and sustainable development. Perhaps our children are already way ahead of us, and we all need to catch up with them. And I will end with a special thanks to our dear friend, Prime Minister of Greenland, Kim Kielsen, for his sweet, kind remarks about our wonderful island, Fair Violence. <laughs> we are friends. <laughs> Thank you all.